What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host that realizes that it's more acceptable to receive game secrets or tips and stuff uh, from like a friend of yours than say like looking up stuff online. Like if you and a friend both play a game, say like Skyrim, and he knows where to find a really cool weapon or something that you didn't find out about yourself, which a lot of people, especially like more traditional gamers like to do. They like to discover things on their own. Like that's way more okay than like looking up, ooh, where do I find cool weapon? Anyway, Zach in today's subreddit is r slash tales from the customer. This story's called a fun US Postal Service tale that I don't know if it will ever end. So to say that I'm not really in a good mood with the US Postal Service at the moment would be an understatement. The sentence just kind of ended there, so I'm assuming they meant that. This story has been taking place since August 2020. Context. I'm a reenactor, at least new to the hobby. If you know anything about it, you might know where this may be going and how expensive the hobby is in general. Also, depending on what time period you are reenacting, some companies who do the best job at reproductions can be in different countries. For this tale, it involves me getting equipment and other accessories from a company in Poland. More specifically, World War I Russian Army gear. Beginning. To start off, I already got the base uniform from a small company in Ukraine. That has already arrived, but they only did uniforms and not all the other stuff I would need for a 1916 persona I was going for. So I bought everything I needed in August. Altogether, this was around a $400 US order. Boots, belts, ammo pouches, bread bags, you name it, I bought it. Everything goes as normal, like the last time I used the same company. Leaves Poland through Warsaw, gets over to the US, and goes into customs. This is where the fun begins. Beginning of the troubles. So I made another order from the same company. A helmet for my KMT China uniform I had on hand. That was a week later, but both orders arrive at the same time and clear customs around the same day, October 4th. The helmet order had consistent updates while the original order for this story stops updating entirely. No estimated delivery date, no change in location either. Tracking only said in transit. Helmet arrives at the end of the month while the $400 package hasn't arrived. I waited until November but still had had no updates. This is where the call began. The frustration period. So I made the first two calls around election day. Both are robocalls. You know the drill. Robot asks you questions and you provide simple answers. I get nowhere with that as I had a hard time trying to figure out how to get a human. Life hack. One time I like cussed out a robot, not out of frustration, but because I wanted to see if it worked. And like, I was like, give me a freaking human, but with bad words. And then I got a human. It was pretty cool. This is also the first time I had decided to escalate something with the USPS too. Mostly because this was a potentially missing $400 package. I decided to wait another week to make another call, considering that mail-in ballots were flooding in. After that week, I made a third call that had a human involved. He told me to get in contact with the company and he thought that something went wrong with customs. Big mistake. He also told me that there would be a holding period of 45 days with US Customs before they have to notify me by mail. I thank him and wait a couple more weeks since it hadn't been 45 days quite yet. This is where even more frustration sets in. Calls 4 through 6 were the most infuriating. Call 4 was after the 45 day waiting period. Got another human but not the same agent. I got the same thing but with the added bonus that election day messed everything up and everything will be slower. Okay. Not very helpful, but I wasn't very angry yet. I was mildly frustrated since I wasn't getting information, but I also couldn't get a refund from the company at this point, even if I tried. This is also around the same time the company sent me an email documenting everything was sent out correctly, and they couldn't do much at that moment. After this, I started to get more frustrated. Call 5 was around the same time as when another package, authentic World War I M1960, 16 stall helm for the uniform and kit I needed for the unit I just joined. Also seemed to go missing since that package also stopped updating. Now I was potentially at $750 worth of lost
lost packages. I got a human, but they seemed to have signal issues. It was a clear day where I was, could tell by the lag and poor mic audio quality, went outside, and it didn't make the signal any better. When I finally tell the agent that I'm trying to locate my missing package, I surprisingly get sent to the international delivery department even though the package was on US soil. Operator even had worse signal. What made it worse was when I was speaking, I heard goodbye, he promptly hung up on me. I should also mention I had to wait 40 minutes on hold for a call that didn't even last 5 minutes. I was beyond angry at this point. At least not long after the call, the other helmet started updating again and was delivered. Last week, first week of December, was when the worst and best calls happened. Call 6 was really bad. I tried to get a human on the line, but the robocall system kept on saying that I couldn't get one. I later realized that I went to the wrong directory. I should have went the other route, or whatever USPS calls it. I basically lost it when the system put me into the survey portion of the call. <laughs> call 7 would be the good call. Despite having to wait an hour on hold, I did get a human. Can't remember her name, but she was the biggest help I got. Apparently, it wasn't Border Patrol that handled the package. It was Immigration and Customs Enforcement, and they had a 30-day waiting period, and the package indeed did clear customs and moved out compared to what calls 3 and 4 were. They thought they might have still had the $400 package. What should have also happened were more consistent updates since it was an international priority package. She promptly got an investigation started, what should have happened during call 5. I got a case number and sent another email to the company asking if they could possibly get me replacements or a refund. I did give them an update on the call I made. They said they were going to file for an investigation with the Polish Post. Not happy with that either, but at least they are doing something. Conclusion? Not really. This is still ongoing, but in reality, I'm just mad overall with this entire situation. I was told that I would get a call or email from USPS by the next day for more details after call 7. I never got that communication. It's been a week now since then. I haven't gotten anything from the company either. All I got are surveys for what they say are our investigation process. I honestly just want the kit I ordered replaced or a refund at the very least. I'll probably call USPS again within the next couple of days to see if they have any more updates since I can't figure out how to view the progress of USPS's investigation. I'll probably still use the same company again since they usually are pretty good with customer service as they were really good about me getting my first uniform and kit to the US when the initial shutdown took place. I'll update if anything new happens. Update number one. Just made call eight. Had to wait an hour and 30 minutes on what was supposed to be a 30 minute hold. Everything is overall worse. No info on the case. They opened up another case. They say it's still held by customs. I ask that hasn't it been over 30 to 45 days since they held it? Lady argued no. Package arrived into customs October 2nd to the 4th. That means the 45 day hold should have ended anywhere between November 16th to 18th. She also told me to contact the vendor. I already did. Still waiting on a reply. I tried pleading my previous case and info in call 7. Ignored. So I have to wait again to get another communication. Wish me luck. Update number 2. The company got back in contact with me. From what they're saying, it seems like the package is headed back towards them. Their words, not mine. Also, USPS has finally pushed forward in their investigation and have acknowledged the second case has been filed and is underway, hoping to get a straight answer soon, since there's two narratives. Yikes. That sounds like a personal nightmare of mine. People just have absolutely no problem messing with you and tugging you around when it's not their freaking money at stake, jerks. All right, this story's called, but no one else has complained. So reading a recent pizza story reminded me of the time a takeout place completely refused to listen to me. To set the scene, I, female, live with my older brother and his girlfriend. We are lazy. We love to order in and particularly loved a local chippy slash takeaway. We would order from them at least once a week, always the same order because we're basic. I'm autistic and with that comes a 
major issue with foods and textures. I always get battered sausages and a bag of chips. It's good enough for me and usually cooked perfectly. So one night we order in, things go like usual. Food handoff is quick. As I opened the bag, I realized something had gone wrong. There was that distinct smell of undercooked potato. Upon fishing out the bag of chips, I find the whole bag is undercooked, pasty, some still hard and almost raw. I show it to my brother just to make sure the ASD brain wasn't messing with me, and he confirmed they are way undercooked. He decided that I should call them since it was my food that had the problem, which sure, I get. So I call them, shaking since phone calls are horrid and takeaway places always sound like garbled nonsense on the phone. Despite these issues, I managed to mostly understand the woman on the other side, thankfully. I explain the issue, that the chips are way undercooked. Pretty simple, right? Nope. This woman proceeds to shout over to the cook about my issue, and I manage to hear the cook respond that the chips are fine. The woman on the phone then repeats this to me. Listen, we order from there a lot. We know the delivery guy from the sound of his car and his distinct whistling. We love their food. In a panic at being accused of lying, I emphasize this information, emphasize we order all the time and we love the food, but this time the chips were just way undercooked and not edible. This woman, this amazing being, then proceeded to reply, But no one else complained. Lots of food has gone out and no one else has called in about an issue with their chips. For the life of me, I think my mind actually froze for a second. This woman legit tried to say I was lying because no one else had called in. I couldn't understand the logic of it, especially when a batch of chips usually does maybe two orders max. I try to again explain that sure, no one else is called in, but that doesn't change the fact that my chips are not edible. This woman huffed. She sighed audibly. She let me know it would take at least an hour for me to get replacement chips. Well, I am a patient woman, so of course I say that's fine. I don't mind the wait since I would like to eat more than just battered sausages for dinner. The replacement chips came in 15 minutes. The replacement chips chips were clearly from two different batches. I know because half were undercooked and pasty like the original bag, while the other half were cooked perfectly. Clearly no one else has complained about the chips because I just received the leftovers from the same batch I complained about originally. Y'all know I left a detailed review about it, and we haven't ordered from there again. Oh man, that actually really sucks. Like, it's so sad when you can't go to a favorite restaurant anymore because of, you know, morals, I, I guess, or I guess just a desire not to get screwed over. But maybe it was just a couple of really bad employees. What if, you know, the uh, bad apples? Don't, don't throw out the whole bunch. Go back to that restaurant. Enjoy your food. Seduce the owner. Get free fries for life. Don't just think about these small petty issues. When you're living the high life, having a freaking couple of professional Ronald McDonald impersonators and having them feed you fries from a completely different company. A British company, I'm assuming, because who else calls them chips? Freaking weirdos. Anyway, I'm sorry. I was forcing my fantasies onto other people. It's Super Bowl Party 1987 all over again. Y'all have no idea how badly I screwed up that party. And I bet you're wondering, Zach, you couldn't have screwed it up that badly. Like, what do you, what'd you even do? Well, to give you an idea, I wasn't even born for another 12 years. That's how bad I screwed up. All right, this story's called Buy One Pizza, Get Five Free, A Tale of Gross Incompetence. This happened over a decade ago, so a few details may be generalized. No driver's tips were harmed during the events of this story. Late one evening, with nothing in the fridge and no desire to buy groceries, I ordered a pizza at around 10.30 p.m. for my local pizza hat. Pepperoni, green olives, and stuffed crust. I've ordered the same pizza countless times, and it's not difficult to get it right except for this particular evening. Pizza arrives at around 11 o'clock. I pay and sit down to enjoy my dinner. I never had a prior reason to check my order, so I assumed it was right and let the driver go. Pepperoni, black olives, stuffed crust. I called the hat and let them know. They issue another pizza. It arrives at around 11.30. I ask the driver if he wants to take back the wrong pizza and he declines. The driver hands me the new pizza and leaves immediately. I check my replacement. Pepper 
pepperoni, check. Green olives, check. Regular crust. Ah, oh, sh. Again, I call the hat and explain the situation. They're trying to clean up for closing time and ask if I can wait until tomorrow. Dude, I am hungry two hours ago. Bro, you have two pizzas. Take a bite of the, the one with the green olives, and then once you get to the crust, throw it away, and then just eat a piece of stuffed crust. Boom. The manager begrudgingly makes me a third pizza, and I take delivery just after midnight. The driver again declines to take the wrong pizzas. He tries to leave quickly, but I make him wait to check the replacement's replacement. Pepperoni, check. Green olives, checked. Stuffed crust, check. Finally! Now I have what I wanted. And two more pizzas in the fridge. I'll take this moment to tell you that it was not my intention to get three pizzas for the price of one. They just just wouldn't take the other ones back. The next day, I decide to reach out to Corporate Hat. I don't want this happening again, and someone above the manager needs to know what happened. A couple of days later, I get a letter in the mail with a form letter apology and a coupon for a free pizza. If you thought that the incompetence was over, you're in for a treat. About a week later, I cash in on this free pizza. If you've ever used one of these corporate coupons, you know that the delivery driver is supposed to take it. The driver shows up with my pizza. It's right the first time. I hold the coupon out to him and he says something to the effect of, I don't think I need to take it. So he leaves and I enjoy my pizza. Now read this paragraph again for what happened a week later. About a week later, I cash in on this free pizza. If you've ever used one of these corporate coupons, you know that the delivery driver is supposed to take it. The driver shows up with my pizza. It's right the first time. I hold the coupon out to him and he says something to the effect of, I don't think I need to take it. So he leaves and I enjoy my pizza. I'm cheesing the system. I'll accept a downvote for the pun. I'm basically a hardened criminal now. I order free pizza number three a week later. This time, it's not a delivery driver. It's the manager. I get my free pizza and he insists on taking the coupon. My reign of corporate terror has ended. I have since paid for all of my pizzas. <laughs> so that's that's the story of how I managed to wrangle six pizzas for the price of one. <laughs> That's a pretty good story. <laughs> good job, Pizza Hut. Good job. All right, this story's called My Lunch Will Be Cold. I know this is a total first world problem, but it's annoying. I entered an order for one hour ahead of pickup time, which I selected specifically to fit in my schedule. Now, 40 minutes before the selected pickup time, I am notified that it is ready. Now it will be cold by the time I get over there. This keeps happening whenever I order ahead. Either they forget about it and make it while I'm waiting, or they make it super early and it's cold by the requested pickup time. I don't blame the workers too much, but if the restaurant can't handle orders before the pickup time, they should make it where they can't view until it's time to make it. Or do the, we don't cook it until you're checked in thing. I always thought that was annoying, but at least I got hot food that way. Oh my god. That <laughs> I don't know what I would do. Thankfully, I have the pleasure of working at home, so my schedule is not existent if we're being honest uh, <laughs> so i can't relate 100 percent, but i definitely feel your pain and you know what the cool thing is it's not a super exclusively first world country problem anymore this is like worldwide it's pretty cool i know we're moving up as an entire species hell yeah now all we gotta do is wait for that fusion reactor to finish getting built and then we'll uh have mines on the moon to harvest helium 3 from the surface have quantum computers all over and working in tandem with fusion reactors, so we accelerate in terms of technological advancement. Just think about it, man. Soon we'll be exploring the cosmos, and we'll we'll have other alien life forms to hang out with, and we'll have discovered life on a Titan, I think it was, that one moon. And then also on Venus, there's uh, lots of phosphine gas. That's a sign of life, because phosphine gas is never found in that volume anywhere, unless there's life present. Anyway, thank you, OP, for opening our eyes to what uh, technology is on the horizon, and it's wireless. Horizon Wireless. Eat fresh. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.